WiseNet Viewer software is a free client software available for Windows and Mac OS computers. Here we'll show you how to install the software on both platforms. On a Windows PC, we'll run the installer file. Hit the next button and continue through the prompts accepting the license until it's ready to install. Confirm any security dialog boxes that may display from Windows. Wait for the software to finish installing. When it's done, hit the finish button to close the installer. Then you can go to your start menu and click on the WiseNet Viewer icon. On a Macintosh computer, simply run the file that you downloaded, drag the WiseNet Viewer icon to the application folder icon, and wait for the software to finish installing. The first time we run the software, we have to set up an administrator password. This password must be a secure, complex password. You can click the button on the right to see more information about that and you have the option to save or store the password if you want. Then you can go ahead and sign in the first time. You can use that stored password and you also have an option to auto log in so you don't need to log in again. From there, the next step is to register your devices. You can do that from the menu by clicking the auto register button and you have two options to auto register or to use P2P or go into the setup menu, go to device, and then device list, and you'll see we have the auto discovery option. You may have Windows Firewall popping up asking you to confirm any firewall changes, and you might need to hit the refresh button to search again. And any NVRs and DVRs on your network will be discovered. You can check the box, put in the username and the password, the admin username, the admin password, you have an option to save that password if you want as well, and then click register and look at the status message. If you have any other devices to add, you can continue adding them. You can then select the device from the device list, and there's a channel camera name button you can click to retrieve the camera names from that recorder. To use the auto registration, click the device plus button, click the auto register, Enter the username and password for the recorder. You have the option to save the password and hit OK. And in a few moments, your recorders will show up. You'll see the little searching icon displaying, and it will let you know uh, that it found your devices. You can then double click on the device and double click on any channels and cameras to view them. If you wanted to register by DDNS or P2P, choose that option and you would simply enter in the product ID from the unit or from the DDNS that you created and then enter in the username and the password for the device. Next, we can add our cameras to the layout by double clicking on them or drop and dragging them into the viewing grid. When you put your mouse over each camera, you'll see some icons at the bottom. You can double click the camera to go full screen, double click to go back. You'll see we can control things like brightness and contrast, zoom, focus, and other options. We can right click on the layout tab at the top and you can choose the option to save the layout. This allows me to come back to this grouping of cameras in this pattern later on with one click. You can click the X to close the layout, double click the layout to view it again. You can right click and have some options to edit or rename that layout as needed. You can click and drag and move cameras around the view. You can resize the cameras. And then you can right click on the layout and save that as a new layout or just save the existing layout. You can always open up multiple tabs to be able to watch different things at different times. There are icons on the top left to go full screen, to remove all cameras from the view, 
to display the camera names and a status indicator. The event search lets me easily see the events that are happening on my recorder. I can choose by date, I can choose by event type, and I can filter that list and see specific types of events that happen. And then you can double click on an event to view the event viewer on the right to get to your playback video very quickly. And you'll see the video is color coded uh, red for all the events that happened. You can get to playback by clicking the playback icon on the bottom right. You can then use your VCR playback controls, play, fast forward, rewind. You can click the playhead to easily scrub through the video. You can also use your mouse wheel to zoom in or out, or right click and pan around to move to scrub that play window. If you double click on the timeline, you'll get the play indicator and you'll have a selection on the bottom that lets you select video for bookmarking or exporting. You can then right click and you can choose the option of bookmark. This allows you to add a title and text for easy review of footage later on. You'll see the bookmark now shows up in orange and there's a bookmark panel on the right to get to this later on. You can also right click and choose the export option to save a copy of video to your PC. You'll enter in your password. You can export a single camera or multiple cameras from the layout. You can adjust the time and date. You can put in a password to protect the video. And you have an option to back up the high resolution video. Here you'll see I'm adjusting the start and ending time of my video clip to specific uh, time periods. If you export with a password, you can only export it in the WiseNet Media file format. If you export it without the password, you can then choose a standard video file format to export to. And then your export might take a few minutes depending on the size of video, the resolution, and how many cameras you're backing up. And when that's done, a dialog will be shown to tell you that it is done. You can also click the calendar icon on the bottom left to see the video that's recorded in orange on the hard drive. And you can click on a day in the calendar to quickly adjust the timeline to that time period. You can click the filter to choose specific events that you want to see or don't see on the timeline to quickly filter your video to that.